on the stage. Uh, I'm Adai. Uh, I work as a technical marketing engineer focusing on the cloud and API integration here at Coicity. Uh, what I'm going to show next is I want to give a quick overview. I'm not going to take a lot of time um, and then go into the demo. So we say that today the first use case that customers adopt uh, the cloud is for long-term retention, replacing their tapes and so on. Uh, and they have been doing this for their uh, on-prem where they pack up their on-prem and then archive it to any cloud vendor of their choice. Let's call it cloud vendor A today. We support all the public cloud vendors and even any uh, S3 compatible object storage, be it on-prem or in the cloud. Uh, let's assume uh, today we see that customers are archiving it uh, for their long-term retention and due to multiple reasons, one, consolidation, uh, other is merger and acquisition where they want to standardize on a public cloud uh, because the company that they acquired was standardized on a different one or for cost purposes. They would like to move and consolidate and reduce the sprawl, right? They don't want to manage multiple things. One of the vision of Coicity is to reduce sprawl and bring in consolidation. So today the customer is uh, archiving to cloud vendor A. Next, what he wants to do is consolidate to a cloud vendor B, whatever be his choice. So this is done outside of Cohesity. He uses his own tools that's publicly available to move data from one cloud to another. And this proves that the data that we store is agnostic of the cloud vendor. We keep it fully self-contained. All the data is available there. That's what John showed when he showed uh, it being archived to GCP, Azure, and this thing. We had the exact same data everywhere. So this is done outside of Cohesity. Once this is done, what we are going to do is swap the metadata back inside Cohesity to say, here is the new archive destination. And what it brings in is the mobility across cloud, seamless, vendor agnostic. You're not locked into any specific vendor. You can move at your will and then avoid data sprawl. And during all of this, there's no compromise of any data because all the data is encrypted both at rest and in flight. So let's get into the demo and take a look at it. So while, while Ada is just getting set up with the demo, one of the key aspects of this movement from A to B and starting to leverage that, think about that incremental nature of how we send the archives. Mm -hmm. That is also key because once that movement happens from A to B, we no longer have to again, you know, sort of seed the data and re restart from scratch. We will see that it's going to continue to send those incremental data sets because that's an important aspect, right? I mean, you don't want to right. start leveraging B and then end up having to send the data again. So that wanted to just call that out specifically so you make note of it. So I'm getting uh, all my sun, star, and moon aligned in the same line. So getting all my tools. Um, OK, there we go. So here I have my cluster uh, where I have a protection job uh, which is being ar archived. So this is the one we are going to look at it today. So we have multiple runs, the data being sent to the cloud vendor A. So I go to my external targets. You can look at it. I have a cloud vendor A registered, and the archive is being done there. So let's go ahead and do a recovery. So I want to show that we still maintain all the old backups and the data even when we move to a new cloud vendor. So I'm going to do a recovery and files and folders. This is one thing that Arthur asked, like, can I do it based on time? I'm going to say browse, start, and say I want to look for this specific VM, which is the biz tab, add it. It's like a time machine. So you select the point in time you want. You can go back any point in time and then browse through the volumes, figure out what you want, look at it, and then download it. I can say I want to go back any point in time and browse through it. So this is something you wanted to see, right? The other way to do it is recovery, files and folders. I'm going to say I'm looking for star.txt. Okay. Again, needle in a haystack like search. You just find it, type it, and then narrow it down. So I'm selecting it, getting this file, 
and it tells me there are multiple locations and multiple point in time. One is in the cloud, one is in the local target. So I'm going to say I want to download it from cloud vendor A and I'm downloading the file. When this happens, let's go to the step two. So which is basically migrating the data. So I have a cloud migration tool. What it does is it gives me option to migrate data from one public cloud or another public cloud, basically any uh, object storage. So I'm saying I just want to move, not copy, so that the old container is completely empty. I'm saying I want to move from cloud vendor A. As you can see, cloud vendor A, there's 1.8 gigabytes of data. And I'm saying move it to cloud vendor B, which is an S3 store. So let's start the migration. So what it is doing is it is copying the data. So it's vendor agnostic. Anybody can read it. And the data is still encrypted. Nobody can make any sense out of it. So once this data is done, what I'm going to do is I'm going to swap the metadata inside Cohesity. So this time I'm going to do, we want to show all possible ways. So John showed you some REST API. Dianan showed you some uh, UI. I'm going to show you some CLI, which in the back end is also going to call REST API. I'm going to log into my cluster. So I'm going to use this command, basically, which is switching targets. And say my source is cloud vendor A. I'll make sure I use the exact names. So I'm going to my external targets. Oh, not my cluster. External targets. OK, it's all lowercase cloud vendor A. And then say destination is cloud vendor B. So before that, I need to add my cloud vendor B, right? I haven't added it to it. So that's where my postman is coming to my rescue. So I have a postman tool, which is using an API. So I'm making a login. Oops. OK, don't crap out on me. I'm doing a post, body. OK, I'm going to keep it simple. So add a, the new target. So cloud vendor B for archival. I'm saying AWS S3, and this is the bucket name. Region is US hyphen West hyphen one. Access key and secret key. I'm, I'm going to delete these keys after the demo. So no point <laughs> copying it. You're not going to make a bill out for me. So I'll promise you, just after I'm done, somebody is deleting it. <laughs> So, you you don't do switch role. Sorry, switch role. What's that switch role? I I not using all of these, just using uh, role switch to do the things you want to do instead of using secret key access keys. Oh yeah. Yeah, that's also coming in the in the upcoming release. That's, it's it's so good to know that you know whatever I'm asking is also coming. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Can't wait yeah, for it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> So I'm going to swap the thing. So what we did, first there was an archive happening, which was the stage one, which everybody is doing it. The second one was moving the data from a bucket to another object store, which we already did using a, a tool outside of Cohesity. And the third one is registering that bucket or the object store into Cohesity and swapping the metadata. Thereby, you continue to do incremental backups and also have access to your data from the old backups. Done. So now I'm going back to my Cohesity uh, cluster. Now you can see that the archive is moved to cloud vendor B. I'm going to resume this job. I don't have to do uh, on-demand run, but 
the next schedule is going to kick in and continue to use it but in the interest of time for this demo i'm just doing on demand run and you can see that it's already doing a local backup and it is going to archive to the cloud vendor b and now okay it's almost complete so for this specific demo we kept the data to be limited so that it completes in time now i'm going to go back once it completes the archive task also completed it was pretty fast because again dedupe data it was incremental data it didn't do a new baseline i'm going to do a recovery <laughs> So this is really the key stuff. Once now you will see in the recovery that earlier we saw vendor A, right? Now we should be seeing vendor B. So I'm, I'm selecting the same file, star.txt, saying that protection jobs, biz dbvms, add the same file, cloud vendor B. So I can go back and restore it. And as we close this out then, and then we bring up Rollinson next. So Adai, mm -hmm. question on the fly for you. Sure. Um, so why would you want to do something like this? What are some of the scenarios we've seen with our customers where this has been useful? So mainly around consolidation, where sometimes they start with their uh, on-prem ECS kind of object storage or something, and then they realize they want to migrate and consolidate to a vendor. Uh, because now they have made a choice. Or two, uh, they have some uh, MNAs going on saying that, okay, we acquired new companies and this is the cloud of choice and we have standardized on it. So you don't want to, again, have data sprawl both on-prem as well as in the cloud. We bring uh, um, the consolidation across on-prem as well as in the cloud. So that's where it helps and you, it's useful. Yeah, uh, you guys listed pretty much all the major public cloud vendors. Yeah. Yes. Is Oracle coming soon? Uh, I guess it's there already. What? <laughs> yeah, Oracle is, is there. Oracle so or what? Uh, the, what we have seen is uh, customers who, uh, I mean, obviously, almost all of them have Oracle uh, databases that they use. So that's really where I think Oracle is sweetening it up in terms of you know, offering it as part of their ELAs. Uh, and so uh, some of it is uh, customer dri uh, driven. Okay. But for the most part, I would say, uh, in terms of just uh, public cloud, um, it's, it's, it's your, uh, you know, in the top three at this point of time, at least. Okay.